Hello, this is Ronnie again at the Woodstock Fruit Festival 2014, sitting with the legendary pro vegan uh, runner, athlete, speaker. Um, human. I, I know you kind of don't like <laughs> human being, uh, Tim Van Orden. And that's an interesting thing to start off with is that the idea that you know, we sometimes. And, you sometimes have this. Uh, you spoke about this in your class about the idea that people feel like almost they have to have more than just themselves to kind of be part of an elite group like this, I guess, and compassionate competition. And I guess I wanted to hear you speak a little bit about that. If that's okay. Yeah. Whenever a large group comes together, especially a group of people that feel they're somehow alienated from the rest of society. Uh, they don't fit in, maybe because of their diet, maybe because of their skin color, whatever culture they're trying to fit into. Um, we're afraid that we're going to be rejected by that group as well. We've been rejected by the main group, the mainstream, and we really want to make sure we fit in with this group. You know, for the people here, they're eating a high fruit diet, so I want to make sure that I can really mix up well with these people. Sure. So, people try to impress each other. People feel that just being me isn't good enough. It's not universal, not everyone does this, but it's quite common that people feel they need to over-exaggerate their strengths or hide their weaknesses, uh, and they somehow need to compete with each other so that the group will want to include them. Say, ooh, I want you on my team. So show me what you got. Audition for me. You know, so yeah. it's almost like when we got here, there were a lot of auditions going on. Not that anybody was requesting them, but everybody was offering them. Yeah. And you know, when, whenever a, a group comes together, you find that. People yeah. trying to find their place in that. I mean, I don't know what it was exactly about your talk, but I was, it was connecting with me strongly. And I was crying at various points. I don't know if you saw. <laughs> but um, I mean, I was thinking about, and you, you brought up Ted, and you were going on cycling with Ted. And, it's this kind of thing that's come up in my mind a couple of times when I'm here, and I love Ted as well, and love spending time with him, but there's that little insecurity in me that I go, I'm not an elite athlete, so I can't, I can't go and run with Ted or like cycle with him or something, you know, so I feel like oh, I get I miss out on seeing him a little because of that. And it's really connected to me, because I have those thoughts all the time in this community, like, I'm not the athletic guy, and so, yeah. Well, you know, and that's where this conversation really grew out of for me because I was trying to win all these national championships to make a point that this diet really works and that you can do extraordinary things on it. You're not going to be deficient. Sure. And I did that, and I thought, wow, okay, I've done it. People are going to be really excited because here's an example of the diet working really, really well. But what happened was people now felt like they were somehow inferior to me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I, I could never run like you, or I could never be a national champion. I, I'm not good enough. I can't run with you, talk with you, like you're up here on this pedestal somewhere. Sure. It's like, no, 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 I'm not. You know, I, I'm just like any of you. I, I worked really hard to get somewhere, but that doesn't mean I'm different than you or better than you. It just means I, I worked hard in one area mm -hmm. that you maybe haven't. Yeah. So what? So I... I realized that people would, would listen to my talks and they'd say, well, that's great for him, but it's not going to work for me. So I had to find a way to reconnect with my audience to make myself appear less intimidating mm. so that people would say, oh, he's just like us. Yeah. He's one of us. Oh, he has struggles? He has challenges? Okay, well, now, now maybe I'll listen. But if I talk about how great the diet is and look at my great performance, well, they're like, well, that doesn't relate to me. Yeah. So... You, you're very open in your videos, you speak about subjects that a lot of people maybe don't touch on. Um, why, why do you do that and what's your motivation for being so open and honest about these things? First of all, it's not easy. You know, people think you can just turn the camera on and just share a, a truth or a vulnerability or a pain. <clears throat> so it's not about me airing my laundry. A lot of people think it is that I just I'm whining to the camera. I'm being a crybaby on sure. the camera. I've been accused of that. Um, I'd rather not do it. I'd rather keep that personal and private. But the reason I do it is I know that I'm not the only one who deals with these things. And I have done so much work, 
so much reading and so much processing and thinking that I've uncovered some tools that are really, really powerful for me. They've really, really worked well and allowed me to do things in life that I never thought were possible. So it's really about sharing those tools. And I don't sell them. You know, I give them away for free on YouTube. But, yeah. um, so I'm not doing it you know, to, to try to make a lot of money. I make very little money on YouTube. But first I have to let people know that I have a similar challenge. If I give them a solution, if I give them a tool, but I first don't present the challenge, it's not going to mean that much yeah. to them. But if I, first, if I present the challenge and say, this is what I deal with, they can say, ooh, okay, I deal with that too. And then I tell them how I move through it. Yeah. And then the, the tool actually has value to them because they say, okay, he started there, wow, and he did this and he did this and he got there. Maybe that'll work for me and they'll try it. But if I just say, do this, and I'm, I'm perfect and I'm you know above everyone and I don't have challenge, just do this. I don't think that has a lot of value. Hmm. You gotta you gotta show your vulnerability. You know? And you were speaking about you're trying you want to create a community around this kind of concepts and can I speak about that and how can people connect with that and they want to be part of it? Yeah. Uh, basically the community that I'm trying to create is one I call compassionate competition where people are committed to supporting each other, each other through challenging times. And originally I had the idea around athletics, um, but competition is often seen as a rivalry or a domination. So there has to be a winner and there's a loser. You know, we just went through the World Cup. Yeah. So, and if a country loses a game, you know, the, there's chaos in the streets. Yeah. And, some people even commit suicide if their team sure, loses, you know, sure. it's a really traumatic experience. Um, and I've been a part of that type of competition for a long time. But what I've come to realize is that these people that I'm competing with, not against, are actually bringing out my best. They're holding me accountable and allowing me to achieve things or open doors within myself that I'm not able to open when I'm alone. So really, they're my support. They're not my enemy, and I'm not doing anything against them. It's not about beating them, but it's about the fact that they showed up. They had the courage to show up on that field with me or in that race with me, and because they're there, I'm now held to a higher standard, and I will hold them to a higher standard, and together, we will become better people, and we'll do it through challenge. We will face challenge together. And we will become better people together because of that, because we each held each other to that standard. And something I've been asking everyone is, what is your, I guess, your vision of the future? How do you want your life to go? Where do you want this community to go to? What's, what's your vision? That's a really good question. I would love to create, and again, this comes back to the compassionate competition, I would love to create team is not the word I really want to use, uh, a community, a really, really supportive community where people feel welcome, not something that you have to earn a right to be a part of, not something you have to prove your, your worthiness, but a, a welcome community. Bring your challenge, bring your honesty, bring your vulnerability. We welcome you and together we will do extraordinary things. We are going to challenge you. We're not going to make you wrong. We're not going to criticize you. We're not going to correct you. But we are going to challenge you. We're going to challenge you to be vulnerable and to work with whatever shows up. And we'll support you through that process. And you will also do that for us. And I, so I envision this community of people that are committed to doing great acts in the world. Whatever that looks like, we get to choose. The community decides where do we want to focus our energy? Who needs help? And what can we do to help them? And how can we help each other in that process? So I've got the website, Compassionate Competition. I'm going to be um, working on that. I'm developing a mailing list. So you can reach me on the Running Raw website or through YouTube or Facebook, Tim Van Orden. But anyone that wants to be a part of that and co-create it. I don't want to be the dictator telling people how it's going to happen. Yeah. I want it to be a community where we all we create that. Mm -hmm and uh, we support each other. Nobody is better, stronger, weaker than anybody else.
So yeah, the vision, I, I'd like to, to see that community, and I'd like to see, be a part of a group of people doing extraordinary things in the world. And not running away from the challenges, but actually moving towards the challenge and learning from it, but doing it together. You know? Awesome. So, I guess, um, just to finish off, what, what are your upcoming challenges? Have you got some athletic stuff? Are you, have you given up running? Are you, what's happening with your running career? And where are you going to go with that? Well, it is a bit of a challenge because I'm no longer interested in the results that I get as an athlete, but, but I know other people are. <laughs> So when I compete now, it's never about winning for me, but I know that if I do win, that is going to have value to other people. Mm. So regardless of my intention, it's going to have various effects depending on who the audience is. But yeah, I've got a race coming up in Los Angeles in September. I'm getting back into the sport of stair climbing, stair climbing, which you run up the stairwell of skyscrapers like the Empire State Building or the Sears Tower. And it's ridiculously painful. <laughs> uh, and I've bonded the most with my fellow stair climbers. Like running races, yeah, you know, you get to know people. Yeah. But a stair climb race, you suffer so badly that you know anybody who's in that race with you, you know they're going through that same pain. And it, you just, you respect them. It doesn't matter what their religious beliefs are. It doesn't matter what they eat, if they're a fruitarian or not. None of that matters. All you know is when the going gets tough, that's somewhere you can count on. Because you know they can endure pain. Because they went through what you went through. Well, so, and you bond like brothers. We call each other step brothers, you know, because we're walking up the steps of the building, you know, as brothers. So we're step brothers. <laughs> So just to finish off, what's your what's your philosophy on life? What's your the daily thing that's in your mind that how do you direct your life and, and, and your character, I guess? I see my life as a quest. But not as a quest to get anywhere or get anything, but a quest in the sense of question. Like a, a question is about going on a quest. It's about moving along a path without ever finding a destination. So I'm not a goal setter. Even though I've accomplished you know, some extraordinary things, I don't see myself as a goal setter. I don't want to move to an end point. I want to be on a quest. I want to be always asking questions. I want to always be learning. Not because I don't know enough. It's not about feeling inferior or insecure and I don't know enough yet and maybe when I finally know enough I'll get there. It's simply about being fully immersed in the process, being fully immer immersed in life and the journey and never taking it for granted and never think that I have the answer but always keeping myself humble by asking more questions and more questions and the answers aren't really significant because the answers just lead me to new questions and those new questions lead me to new opportunities and lead me to new people and new places and that, that is the quest, that is the journey so for me it's just it's a process, my philosophy is a process of being fully immersed in life and asking questions and allowing myself to be vulnerable and humble and letting just life present itself, letting it show up. That's it, it's that simple. Thank you, Tim. It's, it's a pleasure to be on this journey with you. Yeah. Extraordinary human being right here. Extraordinary well, man. I've Whenever people say, how did I get into this lifestyle, I always mention it was really through one of your videos and through your channel and stuff. That was my first connection with the whole thing. So, that's, so sitting here with you is the, I don't know, I don't know how you put the, the wording on that, but that's the, uh, that's it, kind of meeting up with the, <laughs> the, the end point, and I don't know, I don't know how to put that, but. Or the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's come full circle. Come full circle is the phrase that I was looking for in the thing. But yeah, thanks. Would you like to come to the UK sometime, maybe? Or absolutely. The UK festival? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. We'll, yeah. we'll make that happen. I'm in love with any kind of British accent, whether it's Scottish, Welsh, <laughs> Irish, or English. Right, well, yeah, so runningraw.com. 
and uh, compassionate competition. Yeah, and that, that website is in the process of being constructed, but it'll be up soon. Or you can just follow me on YouTube, yeah. Running Raw, or Start Here is my other YouTube channel. Okay, thank you for watching, and like, share, subscribe this video. See you in the next one. Subscribe. <laughs> Please.